You're so kind for extending the gift of your friendship to a moron like this, master. <laughs> what? How dare you speak about me like that? You're just a servant. They have a point, master. Hey, whose side are you on? Your side, of course. You paid me, so I'll fight ably by your side. Letting them throw the match would not satisfy either of us. I dislike giving less than my full effort. Let your winning instincts take over. Everything's better if you fight for it. Food, women, victory. Besides, we're villains. That means if nothing else, we're allowed to be splashy. Are, are we the baddies? Yes, yes, Shinji. Yes, you are. If you're going to be a villain, might as well be as flamboyant as you please. Don't hold back. I'm not a villain. Don't, don't call me that, you evil woman. Temper, temper, little one. You've got big balls for being such a tiny man. I admire that. Hey, stop, I said stop. Don't pat my head, you baboon. And you reek of alcohol. They're perfect for each other. Pretty much of a problem. Code is one of my favorite protagonists in Kamen Rider. He practically stays relatively the same with Core. I think mean, it's just something else, though. Yeah, I think the problem is just... Mash is just... Like, they just keep rehashing the same thing with her, though. Because it's like, early game, it's like, Oh, I don't know if I can fight with you. I have all this power. Oh, no, I lost my powers. Oh, no, I got my powers back. Oh, no, I died. There's just nothing gets brought up. Like, hey, Mash, do you possibly feel slightly bad that you died? Hey, Mash, how do you feel since you lost your powers? Do you, you know, they have like that moment of trying to throw her, having her throw herself constantly to prove that she can still be helpful, but nothing else happens. And then they're just a recycle of the, oh, no, I feel bad. The time the lost belts are going to get deleted. Oh, no, we should feel so sad. No, Mash, that's stupid. Stop being stupid. Oh, no, the lost belt's going to get deleted. Mash, stop being stupid. Just a lot of the same thing over. Hell, do you remember at the end of, like, part one where they maybe kind of hinted that maybe Mash and the Master had semi, maybe kind of a romantic feeling for each other, and then that went nowhere and it was never brought up ever again? It's like, my problem with MASH dying was they had a perfect excuse to do something with that, but they didn't do anything with it. My always philosophy of this is they should have pulled a in search of Spock for MASH. Had the uh, the epic of remnants be, yes, we are trying to search through these areas and fix them, but then maybe at in, in, uh, in Shinjuku, have this moment of being, oh my god, I detected part of MASH. Oh my god, there might be a way to resurrect MASH. And then you could tie that all together, and then boom, we felt like we earned something. MASH came back. Instead, they just killed her off, and then two missions later, she got brought back by literal deus ex machina. Romani at least earned his death, which, by the way, if you haven't seen the stage performance for Solomon, dude, watching Romani slash Solomon's actor being whole, held in the air by, by stri like, wire as he's using his noble phantasm go off is some of the coolest thing. They tried to do that in Avalon with Faye. Oh, yeah, you mean, like, seven years too fucking late? Oh, God. Man, I... Jesus Christ. Faux ex machina. I mean, you're not wrong. The worst thing about that is like, oh, Mash, I will give up my sentience and all, everything that is myself. I will return to being an animal. Every other thing. Huh. Faux is pointing at this thing. Faux is communicating with this thing. It's like Faux can understand us. Yeah, it's almost like Foo isn't just a regular animal or something. It's almost like him giving up his sentience didn't fucking matter. Oh, God. Oh, God, I hate FGO so much. That's the worst thing about being a fake fan. I could see how it could be better, how it could be so good, but it isn't. Oh. oh. 
I know masters and servants are paired by compatibility. Will their chemistry be constructive in battle? <laughs> Shinji going down the elevator shaft, just rubbing his head like that, just makes it look like he has a bad case of lice. The elevator rumbles to a halt. This must be where we're going. Huh. I was going to spare your life if you surrendered. But since everybody insists, I'll show you the vast difference in our abilities until you cry for mercy. Fate and FGO have problems? Dude, I would argue the entire Nazi-verse has problems. I think the fact that fate is commonly perceived to be like on its own is part of the problems. Like, yeah, you can just watch and read fate stuff, but if you want the whole picture, be prepared to read countless other series that seemingly are unrelated to it until you realize it's all part of one big fucking thing. That big fucking thing is called Nasu jerking off on a page. <sighs> I never finished Ghost, but I liked part of it, but I also heard some things that are like, there's really no like, uh, stakes for him. Like he solves the being dead problem way too early. Once Eldrick's Colvarian makes Swiss cheese out of you, it'll be too late. It's time for a death battle! Once this is over, we'll never have to see this jerk again, right, Master? <coughs> the battle might be over so fast that I won't get to show off. Wait for round two, then. Oh, bark and no bite, right? That's what they say, isn't it? Well, that's you. I'm gonna humiliate you so bad that after this game, you'll never crawl out of your mom's basement. Oh, so your goal isn't just victory, but humiliation. What a greedy little boy you are, Shinji. Very well, I'll bring the rope for you to truss them up. Tie them to the master, whatever your little heart desires. Don't even think about going easy on them, Eldrac. They should have backed down when they could. Mercy isn't in my vocabulary. I have a thirst for the finer things in life, and that is all I care for. I may not always have good fortunes, but with humans or bombs, there's a certain fatal inevitability to life. Now, are you ready to go for broke? It's time to splurge. Live or die by the sword. <laughs> Ways in favor of it than against it. I mean, fair. Disconnection problem, my inner. Oof, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Heaven or hell, duel one. Let's rock! Can't wait for the translation of Triple C. And the battle dialogue reaches the uh, Shinji tank. Oh, God. I almost forgot about that. You really are only interested in money. Oh, no, wait. Now, nah, better idea. Guard, break, guard. No, uh, there we go. Attack, break. The Wheel of Fate is turning. Rabble one, action.
I actually modeled uh, the voice I did for Gilgamesh. I modeled after how he sounds in like Fate Zero. That's a thing I do for a lot of the voices when I do it, or not how he sounds in Fate Zero, but how his Japanese voice actor sounds. What I'll do is I actually try to copy how they sound. The only probable exception to that is, uh, is uh, Imiya. He's the only one I don't emulate his Japanese actor because I first started watching Fate. Uh, I watched uh, the Dean's Day Night. So I got to see Liam O'Brien as Imiya. So to me, that's how he'll always sound. I am the bone of my sword. Steel is my body and fire is my blood. Although the irony for that is, despite saying that, it does sound very weird to do the Liam O'Brien voice while doing the chant because I'm just so used to, uh, to, uh, Jesus Christ. Now I immediately forgot how the chant went. Uh, but I'm used to doing like the Japanese voice for his chant. I'm not quite sure why. Just how it feels. How it feels to chew five gum. Dean's Day Night isn't too bad. Everyone gives that thing a bad rap, but it really isn't that bad. I'm going to be real with you. Dean's Day Night is like the best way to enjoy fate without it being too convoluted. Special Ming Elizabeth sound like a drag queen voice. Elizabeth went through like so many fucking voices. She started off as like this high pitch kind of voice sounding, but then it started to grate on my throat and hurt too long. So then I tried talking through my teeth every time she spoke, but then people complained that they couldn't understand what I was saying. So eventually she just kind of sounded like every other fucking girl voice I do. <laughs> and then quite as easy, it's just. <laughs> it's just fucking add Spanish accent to everything that she does. <laughs> no skill. Oh, that's actually going to turn out good. I actually got like a uh, three hit on her. Nice. There we go. Cool. I'm going to heal right here. Say night of the Tsukime enemy then Dean for me. Exactly. I was going to say, I think that, like, here's a fun thing to know. Dean Stay, like, Dean Stay Night has this stigma that it's bad because it doesn't follow the visual novel or whatever. But Dean Stay Night is, like, super incredibly popular in Japan. Like, it got super popular because of that. But, like, I guess everywhere else, everyone are like, no, it's really bad. Don't fucking watch it. Whereas I think universally everyone says the Tsukihime anime is bad. <laughs> like Dean's Day Night is just the best way you can do Fate Stay Night without having to, without like getting it complicated with the multiple routes and everything. Cause it really didn't need to be that way. You could probably fit all that together. It'd be a little bloated for sure. And not a lot of time for downtime, but you could probably do it. Ow, oh, my body. Oh, sh shit. Uh, uh, he's like, forgive Dean's Day Night, but putting Sakura in that. Okay, yeah, that was a little weird. To be fair, though, 
it's not as weird as Medea, uh, like, it's weird, but it's Medea who did it, and this is also Medea who put Arturia in a dress, while that was basically like, yeah, fucking orgasm until you're my mind slave. So, I mean, really, it's, <laughs> it's not that much different if you think about it. That said, though, it is also worth mentioning that because of Dean's Day Night, we have the, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Archer over-edging his weapons. That was an invention of the anime, but Nasu liked it so much, he used it for the rest of the series. Uh, God, I don't know what to do for this. Uh... <sighs> the question is, do I think... I'm gonna test something real quick. I wanna see if I can act. Wait, I'm stupid. <laughs> you can never have too much edge. I am the bone of my edge. What? What does that even fucking mean? All right, I thought she would probably guard against that one. Oh yeah, stun. Smack. Smack. Stupid disconnection. Oof. That's unfortunate. Oh my god! It worked! Or no, is it because I got... Is it because, uh... Is it because... the uh, No, the attack goes through before her noble phantasm. Okay. It didn't stun her. Never mind. Damn, I was really hoping that it stunned her. But I just beat the shit out of her before she got a chance to use her nimble phantasm. Works for me though. What the hell? How did my servant get defeated? Probably because I spammed skills until you couldn't use your nimble phantasm. No matter how you look at it, I'm the best at everything. I can't lose in the first round. It's your fault, Eldrake. This happened because you suck. Huh. Flogging a waterlogged sailor, are we? It won't reverse your fortunes, master. Ah, if you've got the energy to talk back, then go fight. There's no way I'm losing this. Huh, I don't think that's happening. Did you forget I've been shot in the heart? I'm going to disappear. How did I shoot you in the heart? Say what? You think you can run away and leave me here? I lost because of you. My fault, perhaps, or it could have been carelessness, or a lack of tenacity, luck, ability, etc. Well, whatever. Fortune is fickle and fate is what we make of it. We lost for a reason. We may be strong, but we didn't have what it takes to win. Yeah, skill spamming abilities. Why are you making it sound like somebody else's problem? I did what I'm supposed to do. I'm the best! It wasn't supposed to go like this. You ruined everything by becoming my servant. Useless! Damn it. I can't believe I lost. This game sucks. Sucks! Too much water. Zero out of ten. Master, let's leave this filth and go back to your room already. When we get back, will you pat me on the head for a job well done? Hey, wait, hey, I've got an idea. How about you declare that I won the battle? B -b -b because, y you know, y you just won this battle by accident. There's a 100% chance you'll lose in the second round, but I'll win it for sure. Think about it. Isn't it better for one of us to keep winning than for you to lose in the next round? Hey, wait, I said wait. Can't you see the equation? I'm saying I'll share the Holy Grail with you. Cut it out, Shinji. You've lost and you know it. You can't change what happened. Shut up. We lost because of you. What makes you think you have the right to act so bossy? Damn it. Uh, 
You may have won this one game, but don't get a big head over it. In real life, I'm still a champion. Listen, when I go home, I'm gonna figure out who you really are and... Yeah, about that. <laughs> what the hell is going on? My, my body's disappearing. I've never logged out like this. Yeah, about that. Shinji lets out a desperate cry as his arms, legs, and torso gradually fizzle into blackness. Losers die in the Holy Grail War. As a master, you should have known that, Shinji. What? D die? But just our avatars get erased, right? There's no way you can die in a virtual world. Bro, your mind is, looked up, is hooked up to this virtual world. Yes, you lose, you die. This is a war, not a game. Although war game is still pretty good. Most everyone who joins this war ends up dead. The sole survivor is the only one who can go home alive. What? No way. That isn't funny. But it's a tournament, so it's a game, right? Right? Why is it this stopping? Do, do something! It's a sir. Isn't a servant supposed to help their master? If it was easy to break the rules, they wouldn't have created them in the first place. I mean, a future opponent will beg to differ later, but... <laughs> but, well, the good and bad both are sent off to another world in the end. It's nothing to complain about. Acting like you know so much. Aren't you ashamed at all? First you lose, and now this? Huh. Am I ashamed? Of course I am. I'm so disgusted with myself that I could throw up. But remember what I told you when we made our contract, little boy? Be prepared, because the villain's final moments are laughably miserable. His servant gives a hearty laugh, even as her body is being erased by the system. Consider the, considering the things you've done, this isn't such a bad death. Just let yourself go, Shinji. And you folks over there, let's hear some laughter, huh? It's sad when a clown doesn't get a laugh. May the rest of your journey go well. I'd like it if you ended up stronger than me. I will say though, the like half her face being disappeared, eaten by that corruption, looks gnarly as hell. In life, I fought against military ships. It's against my nature to enjoy fighting weaker opponents. As she turned a forced smile my way, the female pirate disappeared. She was a great navigator and the first person to circumnavigate the world, and she went out laughing. Now that she's gone, Shinji must know what his fate is. Hey, who gave you permission to disappear like that? You gotta help me! Don't leave me! Oh, oh god. Then you, you help me! If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be in this situation right now! You owe me! No, no, I'm disappearing. Didn't we used to be friends? Help me! I'm really disappearing. Why? Why does it feel like I'm going to die in real life too? What the hell? This is crazy! Help! Why aren't you helping me? I'm only eight years old! I don't want to die yet. None ever do. He's gone. The person known as Shinji Mauto has been erased from existence. The only thing that he has left behind is me, the victor. And so, round one of the Holy Grail War comes to a close. The fight is over. I have won and Shinji has lost. And so Shinji will meet death. How is he eight years old? Because we're in a digital world and he's using an avatar. 
That's not what he really looks like. His backstory isn't fleshed out until Triple C, but the long and short of it is, he's a test tube baby made by his parents. His parents wanted a prodigy, not a child. So because of that, he feels like he has to prove himself. He's over, he's, he gets an ego. He loves it when people love him. Basically, he's attention sinking, attention seeking, like hardcore attention seeking because his parents don't give a shit about him. It's the same way that if you haven't seen it, um, Ren in here has black hair, but once she leaves the moon cell, her hair is actually blonde. Their avatars that they're using in the moon cell don't 100% accurately replicate or like aren't exactly like how they look in real life. And even Ren, who acknowledges that he has a big ego and is kind of like a loser, basically, acknowledges that Shinji does have supreme hacking skills. So it wouldn't be unheard of for him to hack an avatar to make him look older and cooler. Can it be true? I know what I saw, but it doesn't feel real. Has his life been lost forever just because I won? Without any explanation or greater meaning. It appears that the first round is now over. I wonder how long I stood there dumbfounded. When I finally came to, Rin was staring at me. Super Hackman or some shit. Uh, not really. I mean, they acknowledge, like, even Rin pointed that out earlier where they were like uh where she was like shinji is a supreme hacker i don't want to have to deal with him so i hope he gets taken out early on she basically acknowledges his folly will forever be his ego and whatnot but he does have some skill was the long and short way about it while also being a fetus <laughs> I think it was more so he just learned how to hack and do all that because hacking, if you aren't aware, because hi, fantastic world building and extra. What I love about it, he says in sarcastic tone, uh, we don't get a lot of world building about this until near the end of the game and it's all optional dialogue. There's no more magic inside of this world in this timeline. A ritual from another type moon series that went normal in the normal timeline went wrong in here and it destroyed all the mana or ether or whatever the fuck it's called in the world. So normal magic isn't possible. Now, most wizards, mage, magi or maguses, whatever they're called. I don't know the proper term. I know there's a difference between all those. Um... Now they basically ha they hack machinery and devices by putting their soul into it and hack it that way. That's what it means to hack, basically, in this universe. It's basically this form of magic. So it was saying he had some skill, which makes sense because his parents are supposed to be insanely rich, care about, like, carrying on a legacy. So he's been forced to do a bunch of magic bullshittery. But he's not happy with it, but yeah. Even though Shinji was the one who chose to fight you, he's the one who ended up dead. The reigning game champion of Asia is defeated. Oh yeah, that's another thing. He's a reigning game champ. Really proud about that. The moron didn't have a clue how to fight for his life. Such is the fate of any wizard who treats the Holy Grail War like a game. A pathetic way to die, no? Yeah. I was just saying that for anyone else, uh... The story takes place in the future in another universe setting direction. Okay, fun fact uh, about fate, if you aren't aware, everything is a completely different timeline. Everything. Even shit that feel like they should be together are, in fact, not. Like, Fate Zero, it's a prequel? Kind of, but not really. Nasu has said that it's technically a prequel to a different Fate Stay Night, not the visual novel, because the events don't 100% add up. Someone fucked up in writing a prequel, that's... Prequel writing 101, don't contradict already uh, already stated information, which they did. Uh, but I feel like that's more on Nasu's part than it was on Orobuchi's, because I still think Zero is probably the best written f fate work of all time. Uh, and in this universe, yes, we are also in the far future. I think it's like 21, 28 or something like that. We're in the 22nd century, at least. But yeah. 
And like I said, the uh, the Technomancer thing was just to explain that for anyone who doesn't have any idea. Because like I said, that's one thing I really hate about Fate Extra is they don't establish their world. Triple C, once you get out of the prologue and you get to talk with Sakura, she immediately reestablishes the world, reestablishes everything that's going on so you can get a grip on everything. That's why I still think Triple C is the better of the two games. I automatically opened my mouth to defend the dead from desecration. This place is a battlefield. What sense is there in exalting someone who has who has dealt defeat? This would lead to a connection to angel notes almost. God, please don't remind me that that exists. Oh, God, we already talked about that earlier, but since you weren't here, the long and short of it is, I really hate that Type Moon actually does that, tries to have connections to all of its other series that it barely promotes, barely talks about, and that are only found in extra materials. Like, I know Notes technically exists as a very short story, but pretty much all of its other lore is in extra materials. And I, I hate that crap, because Nasu will reference a lot of it left and right, as though he expects you to read all everything he puts out like it is gospel and if you didn't get it go fuck yourself the look in her eyes and her words drove home a message on the field of battle b uh, battle losers die where nothing is exactly canon because he has some form of phobia of direct sequels or prequels i this might be a pessimistic part of my brain that thinks this but i've become very pessimistic as i've grown older um I don't think it's he has a fear of prequels and sequels. I think it's more so if you can't pinpoint a direct canon, you can't contradict anything. So he's free to do whatever the fuck he wants with uh, the lore and everything. And just be like, oh, yeah, this is a different continuity. This is a different timeline. The rules are different in this world. It should have been obvious, but apparently not to Shinji and I. The winner of the Holy Grail War can be granted any wish, but there is only one winner. Everyone who enters his wishes and dreams, things they desire to have at any cost, things worth dying for. You don't seem to have regained any of your memory yet. It's better that way, to lack a motive, that is, but you should at least be mentally prepared. If you're not ready to kill or be killed, it'd be better to go hide under a rock. Unprepared. Right, as long as you mean it. Ren is right about everything. Everyone who makes a stand here fights with a strong will. There's not a single one I can defeat without a hard fight first. I still don't have a reason to fight. I can't even think about killing and being killed until I have some reason to fight. I just realized, is this basically fucking Kamen Rider Ryuki? But in digital space instead of mirrors? <laughs> That said, what right do I have to trample over people's dreams? Have his cake and eat it too. Ever since he thought up parallel universe magic, things went downhill from there. Oh, it's even worse when he tries to explain how people traverse those multiverses and everything else. <laughs> so I mean now with the common Rider comparisons? God, it's so weird. <laughs> Uh, my way of the version of how Nasu first direction of how the setting should go and how Nasu doesn't know his own work. I mean, it definitely feels like it. Like I've said a couple times, there is there is a section in the back of the Fate X Stella uh, extra material that makes a joke that says, basically, uh, originally for Extella he wanted uh, he wanted Robin Hood to be in the game, uh, but obviously they didn't make it happen. He wouldn't be added till the sequel. Um. But it also says it's like that's all they could piece together from the notes that they could decipher on Nasu's desk. And I wonder, like, and I sit there and wonder, it's like, okay, so how much of the fact that, how much of that is real and how much of that is a joke? The fact that Nasu has a shit ton of notes on his desk and nobody can understand them. Like, where does the joke end and reality begins? FGO is basically decade. God, does that mean it's also not going to have a set? Well, I was going to say it already has a not satisfying ending. So pretty much there. <laughs> when are they going to tease the ending and then have it be something completely different in a uh, in a standalone? <laughs> all right, we now have all of Francis Drake stuff. 
If I remember correctly, I think it was Ryder. Um, in the original version, they actually just completely cut out one of her uh, Matrix things. I can't remember which one, but it's like just completely gone. Like it's just removed from the English version. The patch I'm using adds that back in. I don't know why it was removed. Just thought I'd point that out though. All right. Well, we got through my, uh, got through what I wanted. We got through the first round. Having a boast to give me a fate stay night, what will happen? I think that would require fucking, that would require Nasu to care enough about Tsukihime to do that. If anything, I just see like, I see Tsukihime getting added to fate like it already has been. Japanese exclusive CD drama. God, don't get me started on those. You want to talk about how, like, there used to be an old CD uh, that was like, hey, did you buy the first print of the UBW Blu-ray to get this CD that gives you any and all, gives you some information on the Knights of the Round and it's the only way to learn about it? Even even fucking Fates of Night has an extra material and it's like, hey, were you one of the first 1,000 people to buy this game? If not, well, it sucks to be you now, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, but Dojin are just fan created. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying I don't think Nasu cares enough about his own works to to do it. Look at it now. It just feels like he's adding stuff to fate because it's the big thing. Like, like I said, it took him twenty. It took them how many years to make a remake of of uh, Sukihime, and even then, like remake definitely in the hardest terms, where they basically just redid everything, re. And I mean, redid everything, like, in a negative way. I don't mean that in a positive way. Like, they redid the story, redid all the stuff. It has less routes than the original. Well, but they're coming later. <laughs> Where? Fuck, it took them 20 years. Why isn't he here now? Because <laughs> they didn't care. That's the simple point. Unless you're Melty Blood, which semi-regularly gets updates, or Fate, which gets everything under the fucking sun, you don't matter. But by God, Nasu will continue to reference you and make other people think you matter. Again, I still say, like, the greatest injustice out of all of Fate is that Fate Prototype, a scrapped concept for what would be Fate Stay Night, is still technically canon. A cancelled project is canon. God, I hate Fate. <laughs> I don't hate it. I just hate the intricacies of it. All right. I'm going to take a break real quick. Uh, probably go. Uh, I'm going to go use the bathroom again. Do a bunch of stuff. When we come back, I'm going to boot up some Goku Basara and we're going to finish, finish that up. So hang tight for a bit, guys. Hey, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to leave it a like. And if you want to see more of my future content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And to stay up to date with all the releases that come out daily, be sure to click that bell. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, why not check out my Patreon page? Link is down in the description. And as always, until the next video, hasta.